Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com and today I'm really excited to share with you a project that I have been dreaming up for a really long time. Today I'm doing this video in collaboration with my dear friend Cami over at Tidbits. Now we didn't actually plan to do this as a collaboration, but we found out that we were both sharing in the first week of October for our YouTube channels our faux fireplaces and also our art TVs that we both ended up having above them. We did not plan this. We didn't even plan that we were both even doing this project. Hers definitely looks different than mine, so it's another option of a way to do a faux mantle. She's chosen different art, and so we thought it'd be really fun for you to see two different ways of doing this. So whenever you're done watching my faux fireplace DIY video, you can head over and see how Cami and her husband built theirs. So when we first walked through our farmhouse to potentially place an offer on it, the owners before us had a fake mantle on this wall. Now, you would think our house would have some kind of wood stove or fireplace here. It just seems like a focal wall that needs something like that. It does have a chimney. We've just installed a wood stove but it's not right here, but there is a vent on the floor going to the room above it. So I think at some point there was something here to heat the house and it just feels right that this room should have it. So the first thing we did when we moved here is we put an armoire here so we could put the TV in it, any components like that. And it was fine, but I always just felt like it needed a fireplace. But one thing I really wanted to avoid was something that looked obviously fake and really cheesy. I didn't want to just put a mantle up on the wall. I wanted to make you feel like you could actually light a fire on it. And so I took forever on this project. I spent time collecting the right mantle that would be age appropriate for our 1860s farmhouse. I spent time sourcing and thinking through a hearth so that it could actually sit on a real hearth and then also acquiring the antique surround and summer cover. Finally, it's finished. I love how it turned out. It does just feel very right in this room and I'm excited to share with you how you could recreate this in your own home. So even if you don't have an old home but you want some of that character, like brick and stone and a mantle, you totally can do this. This is 100% faux and I feel like it looks like it's real. So let me explain to you how we did it. The first thing I did was I acquired a mantle. I found this on Facebook Marketplace. I had it shipped to me through a company called U-Ship because it wasn't in our area. I was very particular. I wanted something big because we have tall ceilings and a big wall that needed to be filled out. So when I found the perfect one, it was only $100, but then it cost, I think, around $150 to ship. So I was still in it for less than $300. It needed new paint, but it was really pretty. The next thing I needed to figure out was what I was going to put inside of it. Back in the Victorian time, they had usually a cast iron surround, but then in the summer, they would fit a cover over it so that way you couldn't see into the chimney since it wasn't being used. I wanted to, even though that would have only been like that in the summer, I wanted to find something that I could stick there year round so that you could have the illusion of there being a chimney behind it, but it wouldn't be there. We found a really rusty, old set, which is rare to find. Sometimes it's hard. A lot of times if you start looking on Facebook Marketplace or at antique shops, you'll find the surround or you'll find the cover, but you hardly ever find them together. And I think the reason for that is that at some point people switched over to converting their fireplaces to gas. And so they ditched the summer cover. They really didn't anticipate that it would be something we would seek out later. This is what the man at the salvage place where I found it actually told me because he had so many surrounds and summer covers and he only had one that was an actual set. So he told me that it's just rare to find them still married because so many people ditched them whenever they kept the surround, converted it to gas, but then they ditched the cover. He sold it to me for 35 bucks. I was really surprised there, were, well, there wasn't a price on it and so I had already picked it out. I already knew I wanted it and I was like, so how much do I owe you? And he was like, 50. Well, it's pretty rusty, 35. I was like, okay. So originally I was just going to spray paint over the rust, spray paint it black. But one of you on here, maybe several of you, mentioned that I should have it sandblasted. I really didn't know where to do that but we also had a cast iron tub that we'd taken out of the cottage on our property 
and I needed them both sandblasted. So I figured, you know, if I'm gonna get someone to do this for me, I should just do both. So I ended up hiring a mobile sandblaster. He sandblasted it, which of course added to the cost of the project. So the surround and summer cover were $35, but I ended up spending, I think, around 100, 150 to have it sandblasted, which ultimately I ended up with something that was perfect. So it was totally worth it for me. We spray painted it black after that. Now, if this was gonna be used for a real fireplace, we would have had it powder coated, but this is obviously just for show and all I needed it to be was smooth and black. Next step was we acquired some materials. I did the same brick veneer that I did on our chimney, which that video will be coming very soon. And the reason why we went with brick veneer, we had some leftover from that project. And then we also had some leftover slate tiles from that project as well. This is one of those moments where I told Luke, we need to do this mantle project this week. This is the to-do list for the blog is to get this mantle project done. I don't really know if I wanna do tile or marble or slate. And I was like, you know what? Let's just pull together all the stuff that we have laying around that's left from all the other projects and just make this one of those no need to go to the store type of things. The first step was to take off the shoe molding so that everything could lay flat against the wall. Now we also should have taken off the baseboards at least in most houses, but our house has so much drywall and plaster on top of each other because at some point people repaired things that the wall is basically level with the baseboards. So we opted to not take that off. We just took off the shoe molding. The next step was to install the hearth. So I laid out on the floor some slate tile as a border for the hearth. And then a friend of mine actually brought over some old slate shingles. They had been pulled off of a church and she didn't really have any use for them. And I really wasn't sure that I did either. But whenever I laid those out, they still had the nail holes in it from being shingles, but it just looks so pretty with that old rustic slate with the outline of the new slate. And so I laid it out on the floor and told Luke this is definitely gonna be the hearth. Now the next problem that we had was we needed to figure out a way to put it on the floor and actually grout it, but I didn't wanna cut the floor out. That's what you should have done because it should be level with the floor. I didn't really wanna add much height to it. I ended up finding a product just by Googling it and at Lowe's I found a sticky sheet. It's made for if you wanna do a really quick tile project on your backsplash or something, you stick it on the wall and you can just stick your tile on and then grout right over it so you don't have to wait for the adhesive to dry. You don't have to add any height. I thought, why couldn't we just do that right on the floor? Now, I didn't want to put too much of the sticky side on the floor because later on, if we or somebody wants to remove this, I don't want the floor damaged. So I put some paper on the back of most of it and just left sticky edges. I figured even if there was only a little bit sticking to the floor, it still would be so heavy that it would almost act as a rug in place with the grout on top and the slate and the mantle. I knew that it wasn't going to go anywhere even if I only put a little bit of the sticky on it. So I stuck that paper down in the size that we wanted. I put my slate tile on top and then Luke actually grouted with some black grout. Now I did forget to mention that before we embarked on assembling all of this, I made a list in my phone of the steps in order. Luke and I sat down one night and we just thought through it because there were so many variables. Like, well, once we get the brick up, then how are we going to attach the surround and the summer cover? So we thought through the whole step. The hearth was definitely the first step. After the hearth was done, we needed to work on the mantle and the brick. The next step on our list was to spray paint the insert and summer cover. We just used some black spray paint. The next step was to add plywood to the back of the mantle. This was the only way I could think to add the brick without getting too extensive. I thought we could brick the wall, put the mantle up to it. That would have more of the dimension of the chimney look because it would be meeting the chimney but it just sounded really complicated and I knew it'd be so much easier to just put plywood on there, only brick the areas that we needed. The next step was to paint the plywood black. We did this because I wanted, whenever the summer cover was over it, I wanted it to be black behind there so that it looked like a chimney going up, just a dark space. I put a fresh coat of semi-gloss white paint onto the mantle. The next step that we did was we put brick over the plywood. We only put it around the outside edges. We didn't put it where, of course, the surround and summer cover would go. And thankfully, the measurements worked out so perfectly. All we needed was one layer of brick all the way around. We just did some 
adhesive, kind of like the tiles, and then we grouted it with gray grout. Now, when I first went to go paint the brick white, I noticed that we had put the grout too high up and so it looked like just a solid sheet of brick and grout. And so then Luke scooped out a little bit more grout so that it would create more of a divot and have that aged look. I will link down in the description box the brick that we used. We used the old Chicago brick veneers from Home Depot. I like them because they look so aged, it makes you think that this has always been here. After adding the mortar and letting it dry, I went over it with some white paint. Now I know there are people out there right now who are saying, no, why'd you paint that beautiful brick? But here was my reasoning for it. When you're sitting in our living room and you're viewing the mantle, you have in the same sight line, the brick chimney that we just did for the wood stove. And it really just looked way too matchy matchy for me. And I just really wanted the black and white look. Now, keep in mind, I do plan to repaint this living room so that the whole mantle and the, the whole thing pops from the wall. So right now it kind of blends in, but that was my reasoning for painting the brick. I did an eggshell finish on the brick and a semi-gloss on the mantle. The third step we did was we brought the mantle in and put it on top of the hearth so that the height was all established. We centered it and then we outlined the mantle. This was so that we could hang the TV above it and know where it should be, but we would still have access to behind the mantle so that we could cut the holes and hide the wires. The next step was dealing with the TV. Now I did get the art TV. This has been on my home decor wish list forever. I didn't want to have to hide the TV, but I also didn't want to put something not pretty above our mantle. And so I got the TV that looks like art. Now, one of the ways to make it really look like art is by hiding the cords. So Luke just cut a hole with a drill bit up above where the TV would be down below. We just fish the wire through. After that was through, we could begin installing the mantle. So before we brought the mantle in, Luke found all of the studs. This is really tricky in an old house. You can't just use a stud finder because we have so many layers of wall that you can't even, it won't even pick it up. So Luke tapped and he was able to identify where the wood was and then he used some screws in certain spots to just confirm it. And then we marked on the wall where all the studs were and we just screwed the mantle to the wall right through the mantle. And I know that that's not good because it essentially damages the mantle because we put screws right through it. But I knew as a mom that this thing had to be extremely secure. I'm like, Luke, put a screw in every single stud because this is like a massive thing that if it fell on a child, it'd be really bad. So we did choose to just put the screws right through it all in studs. So it's in like four or five studs at this point. And then we just plan to patch it later, of course. After the mantle was securely attached to the wall, the next step was to attach the surround. The back of the surround had two cast iron attachments, if you will, that had holes in it. The only way we could think to do this was by putting a one by six in between those holes, screwing it in so that it had something wood to attach to. We painted that one by six with some black paint and then we screwed through that into the plywood and the studs behind it. So we found where the stud was all the way behind that and we screwed right through the board that was attached to the surround through the plywood and into the studs so that essentially it's just standing there. You could almost just prop it up, but it's cast iron. So I needed it to be strong so that Daniel couldn't pull it over on himself. Now the next challenge was making the summer cover fit inside because Though they were a pair, at some point, a few pieces I believe were lost. It didn't fit perfectly. So what we did was we just screwed a piece of wire into the board that we put into the surround and then we just wired it up. And it's really strong. I don't think it's going anywhere. Luke did several turns on the wire, poked it back through, and now it is in place. Overall, I am so happy with how this turned out. I told Luke it looks so real that I'm ready to just put some logs on the hearth and light them. I said, obviously I'm kidding, but it just, it does feel very real, very cozy. At some point, I don't think, I don't know if we'll ever do this because it would probably require us taking our whole project apart, but it'd be cool to get a gas insert that actually fit so that in the summer you had the cover and then in the winter there was flames. But just outside of this room, there will be a cozy fire. So it'll probably just stay like this, but 
Overall, very inexpensive project. I really feel like we have a fireplace now. I'm excited for a mantle to decorate through the seasons. There's just something about decorating a mantle and I've never had one in my last house. We didn't have a mantle, we didn't have any place to put one. In this house, we didn't have one, and I just wanted to do all of the mantle decorating. It seems like all throughout the seasons, now at least I have a mantle to decorate, so I'm so excited. And you can do this project in any house. All you need is a few tiles for a hearth, some grout, brick veneers, all of that was so cheap. They were all just left over from a project we already had. Plywood, a two by four, and then once you find your mantle, and your insert, you'll be good to go. You can search on Facebook Marketplace, eBay. Of course, if this isn't your living room, you wanna create something like this in a bedroom, don't even have to worry about the TV. You can stack art and mirrors. I wanna make one in our room now. I'm like, we should have a mantle in every room. For a more concise version of this tutorial, you can check out my blog. I have this all put into a blog post at farmhousehambune.com with all of the instructions. There'll be printable instructions as well, so you can print this out. We've thought through the order for you uh, so that you can do this project a lot more easily. All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.